Good morning. It's great to be here with you. My topic is friendship. Whether our interactions with others unite or divide, we are in moments of human encounter. And to encounter is to meet another person where they are. And that person does the same in return, meeting us where we are. This can be easy, and this can be difficult. Like billiard balls on a pool table, we bump up against each other in moments of encounter, some by choice, some by chance. And this may lead to friendship. With friendship comes a stronger bond than an initial encounter, a bond of love, which St. Paul calls a bond of perfection. Embedded in what I have just said is some of the loaded language of friendship that St. Francis de Sales offers us in his legacy of spiritual guidance and teachings. Yes, for our patron saint, friendship is a very loaded word. In our contemporary living, we may use the word friend very casually, such as how we, encounter, how we connect with each other on social media, friending each other on Facebook, for example. Likewise, we probably have a select group of people in our lives whom we consider our good friends or even a best friend. Can we differentiate the acquaintances or networked associates we collect on our social media apps from the near and dear confidants and soulmates who often know us better than ourselves. These friends are people with whom we communicate and in the process of that communication, we may be in agreement or disagreement, union or division. Wrapped in this experience is a lot of emotion and when that emotion heats up or even cools, the connection between friends can be jeopardized. Now for a mere acquaintance, a disagreement may have little importance and contribute negligible value to our daily living. But with others, those in our families, our longtime colleagues, partners, and classmates, not being of one mind and heart can lead to words, actions, and emotions that could potentially shatter our relationships. In this talk, I want to explore what friendship means to Francis de Sales, and in particular, what he classifies as true friendships. Throughout, I kindly ask you to call to mind those people in your lives whom you call friend, those with whom you feel very united at the moment, and those with whom you may have severed ties or have strained tethers in your relationship. Our patron, St. Francis de Sales, is a doctor of the church with the title Doctor of Divine Love. For Francis, our God is first and foremost a God who loves. This love extends to all creation, to the whole universe, but most especially God's love is showered on us who are made in God's image. Using the lens of love, our saint teaches us how to strive for holiness. Hence, the relationship of friendship is all about love. It is a special kind of love relationship. In his introduction to the devout life, Francis states clearly what friendship is and provides a three-part definition of the concept. He writes, all love is not friendship, first, because we can love without being loved. In such cases, there is love, but not friendship, since friendship is mutual love, and if it is not mutual, it is not friendship. Secondly, it is not sufficient for it to be merely mutual. Persons who love each other must be aware of their reciprocal affection and if they are unaware of their love, it is not friendship. Thirdly, 
there must also be some kind of communication between them. And this is the basis of friendship. In my other life as a mathematics teacher, I encourage my students to consider non-examples, to illustrate concepts by understanding what they are not. And I want to do the same to help us unpack the Salesian criteria for true friendship. First, as a mutual love, both friends must first and foremost be present in the relationship and love each other. Friendship cannot be one-sided. I often use the non-example of being a fan of a movie star or a music star. I can say I love Cyndi Lauper, my favorite singer. But we're not friends. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> she doesn't know me, nor does she love me. One-sided. Secondly, each friend must have an awareness of the reciprocal love. One cannot be oblivious to the relationship. Again, considering non-examples, this reminds me of high school crushes. Two adolescents may love each other, but not until they tell each other do they know the reciprocity of that crush. And the third component of friendship for Francis de Sales is communication, which he considers to be the basis of the entire enterprise. But what is communicated is what matters, virtue. Do my friend and I share the same values or virtues? Are we supporting each other in good habits or bad habits? And my non-example here is the non-virtue of cursing. I stopped myself once after hanging out with a friend of mine and realized I was cursing more around him than ever before. And this was something shared between us, a bad habit really. And while good speech is trivial compared to virtues like humility or patience, I think it conveys the idea well. Habits shared by friends should be virtuous. Based on Francis's definition, how true are the friendships in our lives? In the twists and turns of daily living, we may not always experience a faithful adherence to this threefold characterization of friendship. And again, we're only human. To make our saint come more alive for us with regard to human encounter and friendship, let's consider one event in the life of Francis de Sales which may actually feel very relevant to, to the divisions we experience in our world today, and in turn, impact the close friendships we have. During his early years of priesthood, Francis de Sales was a missionary during the religious wars of Reformation. Seizing the city of Geneva, Calvinists persecuted Catholic residents. Nearing 80 years old, Theodore Beza was the successor of Calvin, and he was rumored to be softening his convictions against the Roman Catholic Church. With the encouragement of Pope Clement VIII, Francis de Sales was determined to welcome Beza back to the Catholic faith. After many attempts for a private meeting in Geneva, Francis was finally able to meet with Theodore Beza in April 1597. Despite their religious differences, these two men admired each other for their intellect. Beza was taken with Francis's genuine honesty and gentleness. Entering a conversational debate, Francis frankly questioned the Calvinist leader saying, can one obtain salvation in the Roman church? In response, Beza answered in the affirmative, but Catholics can attain salvation. He confronted Francis saying that good works are not necessary for such salvation as they are mere decency. Gently but firmly, Francis reprimanded Beza for his persecution of Catholics, especially if their good works were mere decency. At this point, Beza lost his self-control, becoming very angry, and uttered a few words unworthy of a man of his stature. What did I say about cursing earlier? 
Throughout, Francis remained calm and gentle. While unwavered in his beliefs, Beza was ashamed of his behavior, but having high esteem for de Sales, ended their meeting with an invitation for them to meet again in the near future. The two met two more times. Francis was determined and did not become dissuaded by the old man's bitterness and heart of stone. Anyone ever have conversations like these? What do we learn from the encounter between Francis de Sales and Theodore Beza? Although not friends per se, they possessed a mutual admiration which they made known to the other, the first two characteristics of true friendship. Francis's calm demeanor, coupled with his intention to meet Beza on common ground, before pursuing a discussion of their differences, demonstrates how his communication in style and content was essential if they were to overcome their division, the third criterion for true friendship. We see two ways of handling this tense conversation, with the gentleness of Francis and with the uneven temper of Beza. We may find ourselves in similar situations, when Francis appealed to virtue, gentleness, humility, patience, then he was able to get Beza to see his viewpoint, meeting the other in his shoes, so to speak. While Francis's persuasive rhetoric may have been intended to convert Beza, his conversation was rooted in respect and an understanding of the other's point of view. At the same time, Francis remained honest and forthright in his language. De Sales knew that he was not going to win over the Calvinist leader by shouting or fighting, but with language rooted in love for the other. Salesian scholar Tom Donlin, who Father Daly referenced earlier, says that Francis de Sales' use of gentleness during his actions throughout the wars of religion demonstrates his commitment to nonviolent interpersonal encounters. He was trained in civil discourse and debate, and such eloquence coupled with Francis's hallmark gentle persuasion provided a dialogue grounded in virtue, the foundational and essential object of communication in true friendship. There is something else we can learn from how Francis de Sales engaged his enemies. His approach was no different than when he encountered his friends. Now, we may disagree with our friends and colleagues on a number of issues. We cannot change the dynamics of other people who disagree with us, but we can control as best we can our feelings about and speech toward those who differ in opinions or beliefs from our own. Not easy. But if our goal is to cultivate true friendship, a hub for communicating virtue, then perhaps we can alter the outcomes of differences in a manner that is patient, gentle, and honest. So let us pray for a gentle heart when we find ourselves in tense encounters that divide our hearts from the hearts of our friends. St. Francis de Sales teaches us that a heart speaks to a heart, but lips only to ears. Thank you.